Today, you've caught me in a very impulsive moment where I've decided to start part two of my kitchen makeover project. If you're unfamiliar with part one, what I did was I made over this rental kitchen space with a few different rental hacks and I painted it to refresh it because there was a lot going on in here. At the end of that video, I said, there are still a few things that I might try and do around here. Please let me know if you'd like to see a part two. So here we are doing a part two. Just to refresh your memory, if you haven't seen part one, this is what the kitchen looked like at the very beginning of this project. The walls were sunshine yellow, it was cluttered, full of stuff, there were mismatched tiles everywhere and it really, really needed a bit of a facelift. In part one, I was able to paint and cover up the backsplash with some peel and stick tiles, which made a huge difference, but I've still got a few more things that I'd really like to do. So let's get started. I wanna see what I can do with these countertops. <laughs> As you can see, these countertops are a deep grey colour, which already isn't my favourite thing. They're fine, they work, there's nothing horribly wrong with them, but they've got a lot of staining going on that I cannot get out with any kind of cleaning product. So I think it's time that we covered them up and see what we can do. And I'm dying to try out the contact paper method because I think it has a lot of people divided in opinion on the internet and seeing as I do a lot of makeovers, I want to figure out what my opinion is on this stuff. <laughs> Here's a tip. I've just changed out my cardigan and put something else on because it was depositing little bits of fluff everywhere and because we're about to use contact paper I don't want there to be little bits of fluff where well, there shouldn't be little bits of fluff. I've cleaned the surface twice to make sure that there is nothing left on it and now I'm going to apply my contact paper. I'm using this one by DC Fix, I picked this up in Wilco's and it's kind of like a light wood effect so it should go with all of the other pieces of light wood in the kitchen. I hope. I applied the peel and stick contact paper to the top of the surface, making sure to smooth out any air bubbles as I go. I tried using this um, cutting board, but I found that my hands were so much easier to use. You can buy a tool or use a squeegee, but I feel like if I could feel the air bubbles under my hand, I was doing a good job. It was a bit fiddly, I had to relay it multiple times, but that's the great thing about contact paper is you can just peel it back up and start again. Don't panic about the edges just yet, we clean these up with a craft knife later. I wanted to make sure there was more contact paper towards the edge by the back where the wall was rather than less, because you don't want a gap, you'd rather have more and cut it away. For the edges, all you have to do is cut notches where your cupboard doors are and then you can fold the contact paper in, smooth it down and it should look something like this. I think it turned out really well considering it's just contact paper and I think the quality looks almost the same as the front of the cabinets really. Using an X-Acto knife and scissors, I've cut a rough hole for the sink. I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna go around the edges of the sink and I'm going to adhere the contact paper as I go. Wish me luck, I think this is gonna be fiddly, but we'll take our time and we're gonna get it right. The sink, the sink, <laughs> the sink portion was a little bit fiddly and it took a lot longer than this footage shows. So I took it in very small stages and did one bit at a time, making sure that I cut exactly the right amount off around the sink so we didn't go too far and make sure there were no air bubbles. Take your time with sections like this, it will pay off in the long run. That was actually 
so easy to do. I'm really impressed. The thing that took the longest was being really pedantic and nitpicky about cutting around the sink and also folding over the edges and making sure there was no air bubbles. I'll be honest, I was a bit hesitant. I thought it was going to look a little bit cheap, but in comparison to the somewhat cheap cabinets that are already in here, it looks about the same. My problem now is that the cabinet doors do not match. They are very orange. They look like they've had a really bad spray tan. I do have some contact paper that I'm going to try and cover those with as well. Let me show you. This is by the same brand, DC Fix. And I'm gonna try it on the cabinets. As you can see, it's kind of like a pistachio green. I'm worried it's gonna look a little bit pastel colored with the pink fridge. So I'm gonna try it on one door and we're gonna see what it looks like. This contact paper. This one was my worst nightmare. This is my enemy. After all of the success we had with the worktops, I really thought this was going to be smooth sailing, but despite being the same brand of contact paper, it was really thin and we got air bubbles through the whole thing. So I tried using a hairdryer on them. That was about a two out of 10 for how well that worked. And I tried popping the bubbles with a knife, which I don't know, four out of 10, but I still didn't like the way it looked. Okay, so that is what one door looks like finished. I'm gonna be honest, I don't love it. <laughs> I'm gonna think about this overnight and I'm gonna come back and we're gonna fix it tomorrow. <laughs> Last night I went to Wilco's and picked up a few rolls of the same brand of contact paper in a slightly different finish. This is a white wood grain effect. And this actually has a texture on it. I don't know if you can tell, and it's a lot thicker than the plain one. So as you can see, last night I tried out one cabinet door with the white contact paper. No matter what I do, I can't get these tiny air bubbles out of the sage green, but the white is looking really smooth. So with that in mind, I have made the executive decision to just finish them all up in white. So let's do it. <laughs> doors are done and I've actually lived with them for a couple of days like this and it's safe to say I really really like them. I've got a little bit of styling to do and I've bought a few new pieces that I think are just gonna finish off the kitchen really nicely so let me show you those and we'll get into the final stretch of this video. I couldn't resist trying these out from Primark. I thought they would look really cool underneath the shelving and they were only £1.50. Let's do this first and then I'm gonna restyle clean and show you what it looks like. Make sure you clean it really well first. I don't know how I feel about it. It's not bad for £1.50, I will say that. I just wish it was a full LED strip rather than lots of tiny little LED bulbs. But it does add a little extra light to this space. So yeah, I think I'll leave it. It looks cool. I'll turn it off for now though, because it's, it's messing with the video quality. That's what it looks like without the lights on. Let me know what you prefer in the comments. I don't know how I feel either way. It's fun to try them anyway.
are at the end of today's video. I cannot wait to share with you what this project turned out to look like. First and foremost, let me remind you of what the kitchen looked like way back when I first moved in before the first makeover. As you might remember, it was very dark and dingy. The color on the wall didn't work in the space and there were mix and match tiles everywhere. It was definitely cute and a little bit quirky, but it wasn't practical and it felt very small and enclosed in here. During the first makeover, I was able to give the space a refresh and cover up all those mismatched tiles, paint the room and make it look a little bit more like a home. At that point, I sat with it for about a month, deciding whether I wanted to carry on with the project or leave it as it was. And I'm glad I decided to carry on with it because this is how the kitchen looks now. It looks like a completely different space. I'm so pleased I used all of this vinyl contact paper. Although to be honest, I never want to see vinyl contact paper again. This was, this was a lot of work with an X-Acto knife, let me tell you. I was most impressed with how it worked on the countertops. I think spending the extra time really making sure my lines were straight around the sink made all the difference. I was so worried that it would look cheap and it wouldn't look like it was meant to be that way, but I was pleasantly surprised. It looks so much better than what was there before. And I'm just really pleased with how this turned out. I cannot believe the difference between the original kitchen and the kitchen now. And although I would have liked to show you this process all in one go, I'm glad I did wait and do it in two parts because it allowed me to assess the space and really make sure that I was doing exactly what I wanted. Sometimes the best decisions are to take things a little bit more slowly so you're not rushing through them. I do love to rush through things sometimes, like I can't help it, it's in my nature. <laughs> but with that all being said, that's it for today. So thank you so much for watching. If you're doing any rental makeovers or hacks, good luck and happy decorating and I'll see you next time. Bye.